Chairman from Utah, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Chairman, Ranking Member, uh, Ambassador Ty, for being here. Uh, I think you've, you've seen that almost, almost every question has a district angle as well as an overarching U.S. angle. Um, those are special opportunities for us to, as representatives to be able to, to truly focus on, and, I, and I'm no different. Um, Utah is a very unique crossroads um, position, position in the Western United States, uh, within the mountain region, but um, a, a very huge opportunity for us to lead on trade and, you know, with, with individuals like the former governor and former um, uh, ambassador to China, uh, Hunt, uh, Governor Huntsman Jr., like, there's a huge interest in this. GSP is a, there's a huge interest, and I know we already talked a little bit about it, and which you're now, you, you've, you've talked about that you do overall support it, um, but the refunding and reauthorization of GSP is, is hugely important, and for, for so many reasons. There's an enforcement mechanism that, that exists. There is a competitive nature to China that is, that is, that is essential, in my opinion. Um, costs, it, it, helps, it helps reduce the cost of goods. Could you share a little bit, um, one of my Utah constituents, as they've leveraged this program, Great success. Since 2018, their share of imports from China fell from over 90% to less than 15%, which with, with much of their product now divided among several GSP countries. So this program works. We've seen good data come from it. Since expiring at the end of 2020, they and hundreds of businesses across the country have felt the pain, and U.S. importers have, have paid um, close to $2 billion in tariffs on, on GSP-eligible imports. All right, so it expired in 2020. I'm, just, I'm new to this committee. It was not reauthorized last year. You've expressed support for it. I think there is broad bipartisan support. Could you highlight some positives that, that, that can come from this? Um, maybe share some context on what this committee needs to be able to think through uh, the potential reauthorization. Well, Congressman Moore, I think of um, uh, Governor Huntsman's many titles. Um, it makes also, it hard, Secretary, Governor. It's it's really hard to keep. Them well, uh, Mark, closer to closer to where I sit, he was also Deputy U.S. Trade Representative yeah. um, and a good friend. So, um, you know, in terms of uh, the case for GSP, I I think you've laid out a, a very very strong case for GSP. Um, uh, I'd also say that um, you know it's one of our bedrock uh, trade and development programs and something. Uh, that our uh, developing country trading partners have really come to rely on. Um, so that might be one additional um, uh, dynamic here that wasn't already listed um, in what I thought was a very uh, robust and, and good list of reasons for uh, having the GSP program in place. Uh, and again, um, in terms of my commentary, I think um, if, uh, if Congress can um, update it, uh, it is a really helpful tool uh, for all of us in many different ways. Are there things that would, that would um, be a barrier to the administration and USTR being supportive of this so we can make sure to work these things out in, in, on our congressional side? Um, I think that uh, if our teams are not already in conversation, I know that they have been uh, intermittently over the last few years when uh, there um, uh, has been uh, talk around it, uh, we'll, continue, we'll continue to stand ready uh, to work with all of you. Okay. And with regards to the, the WTO arbitration dispute, um, you know, there's, there's serious national, national security implications here. I've taken a note of a series, a series of these concerning developments um, from the WTO related to our national security and the challenge by China to the U.S. export controls on semiconductors and multiple other WTO rulings against the United States. Um, WTO has no authority in matters of national security, and members on this committee stand firmly behind us, USTR's rejection of their flawed conclusions. Could you update the committee on just any, any more context on how you're thinking about this and other disputes related to national security? Certainly. I think this gets to an area where um, uh, I think Congressman Byer mentioned a little bit, um, feeling like uh, I've sent mixed messages. Uh, look, you know, um, you can be strong on this principle that national security decisions taken by government in um, uh, by governments in their sovereign authority um, shouldn't be subject to WTO panels picking them apart from a trade perspective. Uh, and at the same time, before the reform of the WTO, including its dispute settlement system. So um, again, you know, I want to credit my WTO ambassador, Ambassador Maria Pagan, uh, for um, uh, carrying the flag uh, being very strong on um, our position with respect to where the WTO um, uh, and its jurisdiction should properly be while leaning into a reform program on how to make the WTO work better for us, certainly, um, and for all of its membership. 
and I'll just, I'll just you know, conclude that export controls are critical to maintaining our competitive edge. We have to be firm and strong uh, on this, particularly with respect to China, that this sensitive technology does not end up in the hands of our adversaries, and it's so clear of who those adversaries are. Thank you.